courtesy of Red, it's time for another Fireside Chat, the official podcast of Flames fans. It's go time. Welcome to the Shifts and Fucks podcast. Yes, I was here two days ago and I'm back now. Uh, well, because we had a blockbuster of a trade between the Vancouver Canucks and Calgary Flames. And because of that, I've got Dan from Fireside Podcast making another return uh, guest host visit here. Dan, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for bringing me on, Sean. It's uh, nice to talk hockey when we're on a bit of a break. Yeah. yeah. We had the, the all-star draft today. Uh, you had right. Basically all the Leafs on one team, all the Canucks on another, except for the new Canuck because he is, uh, he got, he, he got, uh, he got, he gets to say one more goodbye to Calgary with being on Tate McRae's team. <laughs> That's got to be All-Star weird year. to be traded when you're mid-air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then there's a three-on-three PWHL uh, showcase uh, game today as well. And tomorrow's skills competition and Saturday's the All-Star game. So... We are talking about that. We are the main event tonight is the Calgary Flames and Vancouver Canucks made a blockbuster trade yesterday. Elias Lindholm is now a Vancouver Canuck, and going the other way are Andre Kuzmenko, Yoni Yermo, Hunter Brustevich, a 2024 first round pick from Vancouver, and then a conditional fourth round pick in 2024. The condition is that if um, if the Canucks make it to the Western Conference Finals, uh, it becomes a third round pick. And if it stays the fourth round pick, it becomes the better of the two picks that Vancouver currently owns, which is theirs and New Jer- the New Jersey Devils pick. So which would with be the, the New Jersey fourth- Devils pick. Most, li- most likely, yes. Um, so that one's that piece is pretty much settled. The first round pick is most likely going to be a late 20s um, for, uh, first round pick. So I, I believe I, I saw um, uh, one of the analysts talking about there is a bit of a break between the uh, in this uh, upcoming draft. So that there's a bit of a drop off after 20. So you there there's you might we might. For future references, we might see some more first-round picks by contenders go this year, but you're still giving yourself an opportunity at getting an impact player. Which and is that's also, I mean, game. picks are currency, right? So even if the Flames don't make that trade, and we've seen what they've done with first in the past, I mean, that could be included in another trade or flipped for something else. Exactly. Well, the Canucks acquired a, a first-round pick last year for Bo Horvat, and then few weeks later swapped it for Philip Ronick. Um with the where the flames are at, we don't know if this is the, there was definitely similarities to the Horvat deal with the Canucks and the Flames lot. Um the Horvat deal with the Canucks last year and the flight and this Lindholm deal for the Flames this year. It kind of, there's a little bit of the inkling of potential rebuild um vibes with this trade. But there's also you don't know what they're doing with a lot of these assets. The Canucks swap swap their first for Hronik and def- kicked off their retool and look where look at where they're at now. Um, I don't necessarily see that as a the potent that, that potential being there for the Flames. Um, but uh, first round pick is always good to have, and it it, it was almost a must and an and expectation for uh, any return for Lindholm. And Sean, the crazy thing is apparently Tanev was in the original talks for this. So it could have been even bigger if Tanev was included. Yeah, I know. I was I was just closing up shop um yesterday when the first the the uh Elliot Friedman tweet dropped saying that it things between the Canucks and Flames were heating up. This was immediately after I had uh, just sort of like gone down a little bit of a rabbit hole in terms of figuring out where the um the Nikita Zadorov quote unquote rumors came from, which there were none. It was more just speculation based off of the Canucks need to clear cap to make a trade like this. Yeah, I haven't seen that from anybody credible. Yeah. So 
Uh, it was well. It came from it came from Elliot Friedman, just just spitballing i like ideas on. Yeah, he was the, spitballing the ideas, but I haven't seen anyone credible confirm that. Yeah, they're talking or someone's called on. No, him. no, and and Rutherford and all of them have all um, so basically debunks that as like they are not shopping him. Um, but uh, yeah, and then you just break down all the like it's okay, it's happening. Uh, and then Rick Dollywall tweets out, checking to see if Tanev's in this deal. And I'm just, I just, I just laughed at that point. I'm like, I mean, if you're going to swing for the fences, see if you can hit it over the green monster for a grand slam. Let's go. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You might as well go big, right? Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. I, I, that, that is, that is something that I want to see. Um, I want to hear from like Rutherford, Alvin and Conroy, like, 10, like 10, 15, like 10, 15 years down the road when they can actually talk about it. I want to know what that potential deal would, would look like. Cause it could have been like, this is a massive deal as it is. That could have been even bigger. Like, well, is it would have get one free. If you take those two, we'll give you Hannafin at no charge. <laughs> or we'll give you AJ Greer. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I think in order for the Canucks to pry away Tanev, it would have taken another first at least it would have yes yeah and i think that's i think i just don't see it happen i could see i could see tana being a canuck at the end of, at uh, in the summer by the summer but um i agree it's like the rumors they might point. go to ottawa i see no reason for ottawa to trade for him you that's kind of guy that i think they'd want to acquire in the off season yeah there's there's yeah was it yeah, again earlier we've been talking about tana being a that well ottawa is looking for professionals as, and Tanev's definitely want, de definitely considered that for sure. Um, I, but we'll see. We'll see where Tanev ends up. We'll see where Hannafin ends up. We can talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but let's continue going through the pieces that the Flames are, were getting because there's only one for the Canucks. Um, the next next piece, I guess, that I would look at is Joni Yermo. Uh, he is a uh, 2020 draft pick. Uh, drafted in the third round, 82nd overall. Um, he's six foot four, 190 pounds. He can skate well, as far, as far as I, I'm not a prospects expert, just based off of what I know from the people I do trust with that. Uh, can skate well, but I don't know what his upside is. I think at best, you, you're hoping for maybe some. AHL games and if he can option for the Flames in the future I think that's your best bet uh, most realistic um, yeah your most realistic sort of outcome for Yoni Irmo yeah I mean the Flames just need defensemen in the system right now like you know they've got what Connor Poolman and you know that's kind of the depth of defense after you know Brady Lyle like you got these no name guys Poirier's out we know he'll probably be in the NHL next year Kuznetsov looked okay, but I think even if Irmo just ends up being a Wrangler for his career, I think the Flames just need some defensemen in the system. It is, yeah, and I think that the having solid AHLers um, yeah. in your system um, is overlooked by a lot of a lot of fans. Um, and you need good you AHLers to make other AHLers better. Exactly, and you help, it helps the development of your younger players when you've got a good solid AHL team for sure. Yeah. So when the flames have that currently with the Wranglers, um, but they need to make sure that uh, the prospect pool and development is continues on that way. So if, if you, if Yermo can become a, a, a solid AHL -er for them, that I think that's a, that's a win for the flames at that point. Yeah, and he's also a guy that has played in the uh, in the U twenties in the World Juniors. He played seven games for Finland. Um, so a guy who you know has, I would say the I always look at the World Juniors being more North American style. And sometimes I worry about how some of these guys are going to look coming over from the the leagues over in Europe. And he's played in the Finnish league. So I went back and watched some World Junior footage. He looks, I think, like he'd be able to adapt fairly well. Yeah, yeah, I think he, I think he's got, he's also, he's got the size, and we, we're yeah. seeing where the way the Canucks are building that have built their blue line this year. Uh, you look back at Vegas, St. Louis, um, even Colorado for to an extent. 
making sure you've got big big defensemen who are physical um and can play smartly uh is huge and a big part of what help was has helped teams be successful especially in the playoffs over the past few years so I've maybe seen some some, maybe you can de- develop better, but I, like I said, I think an AHL bottom pair is probably your best bet for Euromo. Yeah, and I've seen some criticism of him. I mean, the La Liga in Finland is a good league. Like, you know, he's playing against some good players. So, yes, his numbers don't look great, but it's a great place to develop. And as Tree Living News say, it's a place to play with men. Um, and I think that will prepare him well. And that's a lot better than, say, the U.S. college route that we often see or things like that. I think, you know, going from a pro league in Europe like the Liga – to AHL, I think he will adapt well to that. And he'll he might have an easier time playing with gentlemen his own age. Yes. Yeah. And then the uh well I get the the most intriguing pro, uh, part of this deal I think is uh, the the, ne- the next prospect in Hunter Brustevich. Uh just make sure you can <laughs> spell and <laughs> pronounce that name. It's a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a tongue twister. Um, but uh, he is ripping up the OHL. Uh, third round pick from this past draft, 75th overall. Um, Jeff Merrick is and hold and and don't don't get too upset with this comparison. Jeff Merrick has said that he's being called the Adam Fox of the OHL. <laughs> yeah, but I mean Adam Fox, you know, but, even though he left the Flames, he was a good defenseman. Still is. Yes. Yeah. So he's got. Uh, the, at, in 47 games, uh, Hunter Brusevich has eight goals and 69 points uh, this year. He was a very he was he was a player that everyone was a little surprised didn't even get an invite to the um, team Team USA uh, World Juniors. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's there next year um, and being a big part of the the team next year. Um, he's a bit he he doesn't have the size that Yermo has. Uh, he's uh, listed at six foot one ninety. I think six foot might be a bit uh, bit taller than what he really is. He's I think he's probably more by like five uh, eleven ish. Again, not not bit like not a lot, but uh, bit but an undersized offensive defenseman. Um, one of the knocks I kept seeing from some uh, from people on Bruce Devich was. A lot of his uh, assists or secondary assists, uh, he wasn't, which aren't, and they w- wondered if uh, a lot of the, this production is sustainable when he takes the next step into pro hockey. I still think it's a great gamble for the for the Flames to take. Um, he's got some offense. He's got a lot of offensive upside. Um, good, good at skating. I remember watching him play in Penticton uh, this past year. Um, at the uh, Young Stars tournament, and yeah, I was I was impressed, and I think this was a great uh, a, a great sort of player for the Flames to identify and and go after in this in this deal, because the Can- the Canucks were not going to give up their top prospects, and they were no. going to try and avoid giving up any um, any AHLers who they think are close to being uh, being in the in the NHL because they're going to have cap issues next year so um they have what eight i was UFAs wondering if first step pardon the canucks have eight ufas now don't they What's yeah they've got a lot <laughs> they've got uh they've got pd to sign they've got heronic to sign his rfas and then they've got yeah a whack ton of uh of ufas to um take to take care of or do something with um but yeah, I was wondering where where Bruce Devich sort of fit in into that. Um, I thought he might be not necessarily untouchable, but I thought he'd be a tough get um, for any team working with the, the Canucks. But he was also someone I wasn't, I wouldn't have been. I'm I'm not upset that the Canucks used as um, as trade bait here. Um, and you've got to give to get. And if you don't want to give up one of your top prospects, I think he was, especially considering the Flames were, it seems, targeting defensemen. I think he was probably the best one that they're going to give up. You're not going to give up a bunch of seventh rounders and get Lindholm. So, you know, I think yeah. he was a reasonable give for the Canucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, it would be 
look at he's he's also a right shot defenseman too which is yeah. always tough tough to find so like and you know i mean this 69 fun. points is not a flash in the pan either like last year in his first year in the ohl he had 57 points in 68 games which for a defenseman a rookie defenseman is very impressive it is yes yeah and uh I know. I remember when the Canucks made uh, drafted him in the third round. Ever he was, it was a very, uh, um, it was it wasn't. He, they got a lot of uh, applause, applause from a lot of the, uh, the, the internet scouts and the um, and the scouting community as a whole for making that that selection in the third round. So, um, yeah, I think I I. He is the he he might be the biggest wild card in this deal. I agree. Uh, if he can turn into, I think his upside is top four defenseman, power play specialist, um, sort of maybe a step up on what uh, Oliver Shillington has been when he before he, all this has happened with him, and that would be fantastic for the Flames and a, and a great add for the future. Yeah, and I mean, remember the Flames only have two defensemen right now under contract for next year. So I'm not saying that, you know, this guy comes in and plays an NHL role, but everyone's going to have to move up in the organization. So I think, again, they need bodies on the blue line. I think this is a great – right now, to me, Poirier is the only guy that's really a top prospect on the blue line. So this, I think, gives the Flames a second one. Like you said, a right shot. I think right shots are key. We know the Flames need more right shots. And I think – this is the player really that five years down the road when we look at this, we're either going to say made or break broke this deal. It's I don't think it's going to be Kuzmenko. I don't think it's going to be Yermo. I don't think that first is going to turn into a lot for the Flames there. I think it's going to be this player that we're going to say, yeah, the Flames got a good deal because of this or a bad deal because of this. Agreed. I think, yeah, it, for me, it'll come down to, uh, a, what they do with Kuzmenko. Um, B, yeah, if they can, if they can mine something out of that first round pick. But yeah. like I said, I think Bruce Savage is the is the wild card. I think he could be, he could be someone that you can build a blue line around for the for the Flames in the future. And, but he also was, in 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 a sense, buried um, with the Canucks ever since, even after just less than a year year after being drafted. Um, with him being an undersized offensive defenseman, Canucks already have that with their captain Quinn Hughes. Mm -hmm. And you're not the way the Canucks are, have built the the philosophy the Canucks are going by to build um, going forwards. Um, and I don't see them wanting to give up Quinn Hughes anytime soon. No, uh, not sure where he would have fit. Yeah, so for I sure. Was, I, you know, I think this is. When I look back at iconic trades the Flames have made, and I look back at something like the Jerome McGinley deal where they just got scraps of nothing, this is one where I go, okay, there's some interesting pieces here. These pieces could turn anything. I don't think anybody thought Klimchuk or Poirier would turn into anything, but you look at this and go, this could be a good futures deal for the Flames. Yep. Yeah, and uh, they could get more if they – because the next piece here is Andre Kuzmenko. Uh, he scored 39 goals with the Canucks last year. Um, hasn't hasn't really been able to find his game under Rick Tockett, um, but he's he's shown that if he's if you can play him with with good players, he's he and you give him a little bit more leash. I think he 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 will produce, and he might be someone that the Flames can deal before the deadline again, or it could be something that is in the off season or before the deadline next year, because he signed for one more year at 5.5 million. Um, so I think there's, he, maybe he's a fit too. Like there's a lot of ways that the, the acquisition of Andre Kuzmenko could go for the flames. And I don't think it there, there's very few of that I think are going to be bad. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, I think Kuzmenko probably sticks around for the year, and if for no other reason, then I think they need somebody to fill Dylan Dubé's roster spot on the wing, and you know, he's a right shot. The Flames need a right shot winger, so I think Kuzmenko will stick around. I don't know there's a lot of value to him at the deadline. I think if there was, Vancouver probably would have known that and maybe held on to him. Um, I could maybe see it in the offseason, but this is the kind of guy, I, I mean, 
if you're going to rebuild, and I don't think the Flames are doing a full rebuild because they've got Huberto, they've got Kadri, they've got these guys. You still need good NHLers to work with your young guys. Yeah. And I think that, you know, Kuzmenko will find a spot here. And at $5 million, if you're going into a rebuild, it's not a bad contract, especially with the cap going up next year. I think you could easily move him in the offseason or next year. The thing that con- that confuses me is I don't think the Flames need wingers right now. Yeah, I think this was the – he was he was he was in, included because the Canucks needed to clear cap to make that's this it work. yeah like to me the Flames need a centerman or they need defenseman yep and they got a couple they, I mean, we already talked about how they got a couple prospects there for of defensemen um yeah especially after trading Lindholm they definitely need to to add a, a centerman here they got Kadri and Backlund but outside of that you don't really have anyone who you're you're excited about no you might move zari back but i mean we'll see what they end up doing yeah so it's yeah the, but there's a lot of opportunities for it like yeah for for zari for cole schwint uh yeah. to take a step here and 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 claim a spot uh, as a centerman on this team going forwards and I think for both teams, it's interesting that you sort of subtract a top six and gain a top six. Like neither team, I think their lineup's going to change that much. I don't see Kuzmenko bleeding in the bottom six for the Flames. I think he'll probably be maybe with uh, Hubert Okadri. I think it'd be a good fit. You really don't want to disturb that Manjapani line. Like, you know, you kind of move from a center to a winger, but the Flames, I mean, for years have needed a good right winger and maybe he'll turn into that. And yeah, you know, he hasn't had his greatest season this year. I'll be curious to see how he does under Huska. But I have to believe that, you know, he, it wasn't one good year. If we look at it, some of his numbers in Russia, his numbers last year, I think he just needs more confidence. No, I think he needs a little bit more of a leash. Like uh, Rick talk, it was definitely a little heart, a little t- tight on the leash and, and, and asking him to be, um, to do things that he wasn't fully comfortable with. Um, he's also coming from the KHL where the style of play is a lot different. Mm-hmm. So he has some some habits that he was able to get away with over there that you can't get away with over over here, especially under a, a very strict um, north south coach that Rick Tockett is. Um, so I think if he if if Husky gives him a little more leash and allows him to be a, a little more creative and isn't as um, yeah it isn't isn't as a, it's just sort of um, iron fisted with him. I think you 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 will see him uh, his confidence come back. I don't think he's a high thirty. I don't know if he's a high thirties um, potential like pushing forties goal goal scorer consistently in in the league. But I think he should he should be a high twenties low thirties guy. I agree. More, um, a, it's in in the right situation. So, I agree. And Sean, um, I think too, not only the North South thing, like you were talking about with Talkit, but I think you're going from a team with a lot of expectations to one that I think now we can all say doesn't have a lot of expectations. And I think that might help them too. Going from, you know, the top team in the lead to a Flames team where there might be a lot less direction given. It might just be, you know, go out and do your thing. Or, you know, now you're the top guy in a smaller pool. I think that might help them, you know, revitalize his game a little bit too. Because there's a lot of pressure to being on that number one team. Yeah, there is, and he. I think he he was healthy, scratched a few times this year, and you could tell. Even I think it was it was on uh, this past Saturday uh, after the first period, he he stayed on the on the bench um, a little bit longer than everyone else, and you could tell that it was weighing on him that he wasn't playing well enough, and um, it just it was it was not, it was a little bit heartbreaking. He, he he's a character. Uh, he's got a very infectious smile. He's got a very infectious, like happy-go-lucky personality. Um, so, but Flames fans, you've got a character coming, coming, coming to Calgary. Um, I really hope you embrace him. Uh, he, 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 he's very charismatic in his own way. Um, so, yeah, he, he if in a in a year where you've had a very tough go of, of it, um, you do have. Um, you do have someone who's gonna might be able to to light to bring some brevity and some 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 entertainment. I've heard to, nothing to, but good things game. from the Canucks fans and Canucks media about this guy. Like you know, he seems like a character player. Like you said, I think he's somebody who can 
from what I've seen, he, he'll be one of those voices we need when the Flames are about to go through a tough stretch and a guy that can keep it light with the players and also with the media. And I think just, you know, a guy who maybe is going to let that not weigh on him as much. And great with fans. Like, I've heard nothing but great things with fans. You know, he stayed late to sign autographs. He's made sure, you know, kids get to see him. Like, this seems like a true professional. Yeah, yeah. So, I think he... I don't know, maybe that's because um, in Russia, if he didn't sign autographs, you'd be in the gulag, or I'm not I'm not sure, but he seems very <laughs> used to that. Yeah. Um, and then he also had a no-trade no clause. Um, Modified no-trade 12 teams. Yeah, and the Flames were on that list. But the but uh, the Canucks allowed the Flames to talk with him since I think it was Sunday is what I what I read, and they were able to convince him to come to Calgary, and with the plan that they have for him and the team, um, so that was the only thing that might have held up this deal. But it, he waved, and I think he was a little heart. He I think he was heartbroken to to leave Vancouver, but I I wouldn't be surprised if he's very excited to be, yeah, to yeah. I think he's probably start. heartbroken to leave, but with all the things you were talking about, I think it was time. Like you know, and and mm -hmm. maybe that's why I even waved for the Flames. I think he just needed to get out of Vancouver, and you know, we often talk about guys who just need a change of scenery. I think that might be that might be Kuzmenko. Yeah, I I totally expect him to be. Um, again, I don't think he's going to be scoring at the pace that he was last year, but I think no. he's going to be better than what he was this year so far. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think him, him and Hubert are, uh, could have, could be a pair to watch. Cause I, I, I don't know who's going to center that line, but um, th that would be, I think that'd be a, that's a pair that I think you need to put, put together and see if there's any. any yeah. I'd like to see him there. and Sharon as well. Yes. That could work as well. Yeah. And I expect, though it hasn't been announced, that Kuzmenko will don number ninety-six for the Flames. Yeah, most likely. Um, and then that leads us to Elias Lindholm going from the Flames to the Canucks. Um, it sat from what I read, it was the Flames knew he wasn't signing long term with them uh, before the season. Uh, they, but they did. I think they did try to do one more offer to him. They've tried. And they're then, still far apart on money. Yeah, he's looking so, for a number that starts with a one, and the Flames, I'm told, are at about a number that starts with a seven. Yeah. So he is now go going to Vancouver. Um, basically, will. We'll slot in uh, on that uh, Elias Pettersson line uh, along with Eli Mikheyev. Who plays who plays center out of the two Eli Elias's Elias's? We don't know yet. <laughs> but uh And the VP well, Hockey Ops did an interview this afternoon and he said that they'll probably rotate out. Yeah, we'll see. I think they'll probably pl play, see who what works best between the two. Um, yep. and, go and Lindholm from there. will be wearing number twenty three for you guys. Yeah, he will be wearing number twenty three. Um, Annika, his, his, his partner picked that as a, um, as a nod to the, the year, which was last year that their, their son was, uh, their son was born. Um, yet, yeah, uh, Lindholm wore 28 in Calgary. Uh, 28 is a off limits number in, in Vancouver. Uh, it was the also wore 28 in Carolina. Wore, yeah. Luke Bourdon wore 28, uh, before he tragically passed. So uh, that was that's a number that is on uh, twenty three is better than going eighty two. <laughs> well, eighty two is taken as well, anyways. There you go. That that is uh, Ian Cole. There you go. So took that one. Um, you know the the I think I that was looking both both teams get a really good deal here. Like I think that Elias Lindholm is going to fit in really well with the Canucks. I don't know if he'll mm -hmm. resign or not, but even if not. You can tell the Canucks are in win now mode. And this is them putting that yeah. win now stamp on it. Bringing them in this far away from the deadline. We're what, five and a half weeks from the deadline now, roughly. He's going to have a lot of time to get comfortable in Vancouver. He's going to have a lot of time to figure out his line mates. And really also not a big transition going from Calgary to Vancouver. You know, you don't have, you're not moving across the country. You're not moving that far away from your family. Like, I think this is going to work well for everybody. I would not be surprised if, Lindholm doesn't sign, has a great year with Vancouver, and find somebody to give him his 10 next year. 
Yeah, we'll see. I think yeah, his uh, he's had a rough year. Um, definitely not deserving of the number he was lo- he's looking for um, right now. But you you know if he can find chemistry with with Pedersen and Mikheyev, um and help the Canucks go deep in the playoffs, that can that will that can that can change. And he is a right shot had, center. You and I have had debates with Kevin over what this guy is. I think this guy mm-hmm. is a good second line center, and I think that's what he'll be in Vancouver. I think he's I think he's mo- better better suited to being yeah uh, that I don't know if he's gonna ever gonna get that the 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 big money he's looking for um, if he I think if he's depends on what he's looking for if he's wanting money that I think there'll be uh, teams willing to pay pay him the money um, if he's looking for um, just to if he's looking to be part of a team that can be a contender for the majority of his next contract. Cause I think a lot of it's going to be probably finding a, a way to get as much money out of the next six to eight years as possible uh, as well. There'll be teams that are, that have the op that, that can offer six to eight year deals. Um, yeah. As long as I think as every team willing... wants an Elias Lindholm. Yes. It's a matter yes. of how much you want to pay him. Exactly. Um, Going it uh, even as er, as early as recently as Tuesday when uh, Tyler and I were on or er, on talking about uh, we talked about what we wanted to see from the Canucks going forwards trade wise I was I was on team no rentals um, but I was also expecting a little bit more a, a, a more hefty a heftier price for a Lindholm or a Gensel which mm-hmm. were the big names that the Canucks were linked to. Um, I didn't. I thought maybe that the um, they would the Canucks would have to give up maybe a Hoagland or a Pod Colson, um, along with a first and other and and others uh, to make it work. And so I think I Sean is tough too when you're the first teams making a trade because you're setting market value. So there isn't a yeah. my guy's worth this. And I think if we were to wait, you know, five weeks from now, I think the Vancouver Canucks would have had to give up more. And I think that's a big reason why. You know, Rutherford likes to get these trades done early to set that price. Yeah, it all set the price as well as to to get the player in earlier to allow for adjustments and 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 all that to the new, new yeah. team. Yeah, and if the system, Flames had city. Lindholm signed, I think you could have got more from, him, especially at a, the great deal he's got. Like if the Flames had this guy signed, you know, or even if they did a sign and trade for seven or eight, I think you could have got more from him. But I think that you limited your return in a way by trading a a great contract like a great rental deal but a guy that it sounds like thinks he's worth more than he is i think you've limited your return on that in some ways too yeah i think the canucks are definitely from again i think yeah jim rutherford was on um did the rounds he was on uh, donnie and dolly was on uh, the um jeff merrick show uh, did I think there is they they are very much open to uh, bringing Lynn home back, um, but they're also fine with him just being a rental. Mm-hmm. I think if they could find a way to make it, um, get a deal where where even if it is a six a, uh, an eight year deal, um, but it's the the cap the cap hit is reasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they would do it for sure. Um, because they're definitely in win now mode. Yeah. Uh, and I so think one he, thing people forget too is Jim Rutherford was the GM in uh, Carolina when Lindholm was brought in and then traded to the, the Flames. So there's some familiarity with this player even before this deal as well. Yeah, Jim Rutherford was the GM that, that drafted Lindholm. He and and then he was gone when they when they traded him. Right. Ron yeah. Francis traded traded uh, Lindholm and Hannif into the Flames. Um, I think the the yeah the one question and Dylan's brought this up in the chat um, about uh, that Lindholm could be a plan B if Pedersen is too expensive slash wants to go somewhere else. Um, I don't see that. Uh, Pedersen is a RFA this year. The, the Canucks have another another year and and, and a bit to uh, convince him to sign long term. So I don't think that's necessarily it. But it, adding Lindholm now uh, helps maybe provide a, a a different solution if that is if 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 
Petey decides to go the route of Kachuk. And I think that if those two have good chemistry, you might have Pedersen saying, hey, you want me to come back? Bring Lindy back. Like, you know, I could see there, you know, we often look at these guys as pairs. And if they can sync really well as a pair, it might make sense to bring them both back and find a way to do so. Yes, that's the other thing is it a lot of a lot of this will depend on how the Canucks do going forwards, rest of the regular mm-hmm. season, going into the playoffs. If they can make a deep run and make it so that the um and everyone's on board, you might be able to get every, a lot of the key players re-signed at maybe a little bit of a discount. Um and, and and make it work so that you can you can make this more than a one year one year uh, sort of pop for the Canucks. I I don't know the Canucks obviously as well as you do, but I can't see Pedersen go anywhere. He's an RFA. I don't think anyone's going to want to give up the multiple first. It's going to take the prime away from Vancouver. And I think that if you're going to make that kind of a deal, you'd rather go free agent shopping or draft day shopping for a cheaper price. Um, I think Pedersen will be back next year with the Canucks. Oh, I I, I totally expect. Uh, Patterson be back as well. Um, I just don't. I think the question right now is PD is a wanting to focus on just playing hockey, and B. I think the big question for him is whether or not he wants to go long term or if he wants to mm-hmm. follow Austin Matthews, Bridge, yeah. yeah, and go shorter because uh, that's what Matthews has done for two of his deals now, not mm-hmm. gone for, for the full eight. Um, and PD's still still on the younger side, and if he goes a little bit shorter on this first deal, on this next deal, he will still have um, another. He will still have another big big money contract coming. Yeah, I could see him just sign too. a deal, to take him to a free agency. Yeah, I could see. I could see him. Well, he's. Well, I think two he's years 25. away. From, you, yeah, so yeah, he'd be. Yeah, twenty seven. I think he'd be eligible. We have to figure out when he first played, but I think twenty seven. Yeah, so I think. I think he's two or three, two or three years away from from UFA. I don't, I don't know if he's going to sign necessarily sign that short, but I don't think he's going to sign. Um, I, if he's going to sign shorter, I think it'll probably be three to four. Still leave him another three to four or five or go long term at the age of twenty eight, twenty nine. Okay, is yeah. where what I think what we could, I could see him doing. So, um, but. Yeah, I think the big the big questions coming out of this um, are, yeah, what happens with Kuzmenko? Um, do the Flames hold on to him? Uh, as I said, you talked about it earlier. I, I I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I don't see them. I know they. I think there was some talk that they're open to it, open to flipping him if he if he like re gets gets his form back and mm-hmm. starts to get that value back. I just don't see that happening that in five, in five weeks. The only I way I could see them flipping them is if the flames want to act as a bank. And if they're willing to eat 2 million, I think it becomes a lot more attractive for somebody. So if the flames say, Hey, mm-hmm. we'll bring them in. We'll showcase them on our first line. We'll eat 2 million. It's going to cost you a second or something. Then I could see it. But if they're just moving him out, I don't see that happening. No, I, I, I I personally think that uh, he, he'll be there um, for the rest of the season, and then if they can find the right deal or yeah, or I don't think, I don't think five him. weeks is long enough to audition him and show this guy's changed. I think you wait till the draft to do that. Yes, I think the draft or, or you, the draft or July second. You wait and see who yeah. didn't sign the winger they wanted, and then say I got one for you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Sean, can um, I ask you a question? Does your thought change yeah. on this deal for Vancouver based on if Lindholm signs or not? If Lindholm signs, I have like the it's I am and like make the assumption that it's probably going to be a six to eight year deal. Um, he's um, it's going to be an expensive deal. Um, but if he, if he signs long term, um, or yeah, if, even if he signs for like one or two years, if he signs for and signs off back on for another year um, after this season. I freaking love this deal even more. Like I, I like it now. Um, it was like I said. I think that I thought the price was going to be more steep for a Lindholm or a Gensel. Um, I love the fit for for Lindholm on this team right now. Um, they are going for it this year. Um, and if they can make it more than a rental, that would be amazing. But um, even as a rental, you think it was a fair price? I think it, well, it's definitely a fair price for a rental for sure. 
you got you, you got a a a a, 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 a first-round pick. You've got a a prospect who's got a very very good upside, um, and then the and then you've got uh, you had you had to give up Kuzmenko to make the cap work, but he wasn't necessarily working in Van, in Vancouver this year, so it's kind of like it's this is the price to pay. And then you've given up a fourth round that may be a third round pick, and then a um, a defense prospect that I don't know how high he's gonna be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a it's it's very much a fair deal. I, I like the deal mode. from a flame side. Like I don't know these guys as well as you do, but from a flame side, I like what they got back. And I agree with you. I thought there could be more. Um, I think I wonder if the Flames didn't want more NHLers. Like I think the Flames right now are looking at needing young guys. Maybe they could have got another like Hoaglander, but I have a feeling the Vancouver had few guys they wanted to move, and the Flames needed futures. And so I think this is maybe the best you could get futures wise. And, you know, even the fourth round pick, these the Flames are doing really well with making mid-round picks. Like, even if that's a fourth round pick, I can see that being a pick that could be NHL bound. I can also see them not using that pick and wrapping it up in another deal and sending it off. So I think either way, this team has been good at dealing their picks for value and they've been good at making picks. So I think right now with the, t- the Flames going into a retool, rebuild, reuse, recycle, whatever you want to say, whichever R you want to apply, um, you need picks, right? You just need to get young bodies in the organization and getting two of them in this deal, I think is really going to help. And then, yeah. And then add on Hunter Brustavich and, and so, as someone who I think that there's, there, there's a little bit of chatter that they're going to get, they're going to work hard to get him signed to a contract right away here. Mm-hmm. So, um, and if that's the case, that'll be a nice, uh, <clears throat> nice cherry on top here. Um, yeah, it's it it make, makes sense for both teams. It makes it does. sense for both teams. Yeah, and I think you know we all love our own players, right? Flames fans love their players. Vancouver fans love their players, and I think sometimes we overvalue our players. And I've heard a lot of you know Flames Twitter. Oh, Lynn Holdsworth three firsts, or Lynn Holdsworth, you know two firsts, and you know the GM's firstborn child, or all these things. And I think when you look at it, this is a fair return based on what the teams needed. If these were two playoff teams, this deal would not have happened, right? Vancouver didn't want to subtract from the roster, so you weren't going to do that. And I've heard the Flames had other deals on the table with better NHLers than Kuzmenko involved. The Flames took this one because they thought it was the best futures package. Yeah, and uh, it's, yeah, it's the price to pay. For the for the Canucks, it's the price to pay. You, when you compare it to what the what the Canucks got in return for Bo Horvat, they got an NHLer, they got a second round pick, and they got uh, a, a former second round pick and Natu Ratu, and a first round pick. Yeah, it's very similar, it very is. similar. So. You, you and that's that probably and... honestly what they use as a comparable when they're making the deal. Going, look, we did a deal last year. Here's what we're willing to give up because of that. And they're both Lindholm and Horvat are from the same draft. Both top ten yep. draft picks in that draft. Um, both centers. Like it, 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 when you look at the framework of the Horvat trade, it was it's definitely the framework for this trade as well. And I think the Flames may have even got more than they would have if they waited till March because. Vancouver wanted to get this done early. Like with Lindholm off the table, I think Monaghan's the number one center on the market now. And I think if you waited and clogged this up, you would have had a lot of teams that would have just gone on to the next guy or said, you know, what? we're just going to find someone else. Like I think by doing it early, the Flames got a bit of a premium. A premium or just like they got, they were able to, I think they're, it sounded like Conrad had a few other teams talking and they were able to build that build that market up mm-hmm. now, as opposed to waiting till yeah, w- waiting to the uh, the deadline when maybe someone else comes available and or maybe one of those guys gets Lindholm moved down. between now and then. Yeah, that's that's true as well. So, um, and then yeah, uh, Dylan, uh, yeah, going back to the Canucks side here. Um, if say everything goes right, um, does it make it more? let him make it more palatable that it that this is a rental um yeah it makes him more way more palatable that it's, sure. it's a rental um draft picks come and go banners fly especially forever, right? you know 
last five picks, like 25 to 32, yeah. those, those you will come and go. That being said, if, if everything goes right and, and that happens, who's to say that they don't want like Lindholm and PD want to don't want to stick together. Like they want to stick together and they want to see how many they can, how, how, how successful this, this group can be. Yeah, and they can able to make it more than a rental. So you know, and I said the same thing about Huberto when they brought him in. I said bad deal, but between him and Codger, if they would have won the cup, no one would remember those deals. And mm-hmm. you look at any team, you know, I think of teams like uh, Tampa Bay, right? Teams that were these big, powerful teams, they will go out and make deals like this, full well knowing we're paying a lot for one year. Yeah. And I think the Canucks are probably doing the same. Not just, you know, the Stanley Cup means a lot in Canada. And if you look at how much money you make having those home games and all that, I think if they can get one year out of this, you're going to be more likely to attract free agents. You're going to be more likely to have Lindholm want to come back. Like, I think the Stanley Cup, I think in most cases, will make a rental palatable. Oh, yes. And if and not Lindholm, like they... you'll be able to find a guy to fill that if if you if you've just sipped from Lord Stanley's mug. Yes. And it's not like, and again, it's not like the they paid out the nose for it, that uh, uh, overpaid compared to other other prices for, um, yeah, that compared to other prices in previous years. And if we look at any any deadline deal like this, it's usually for futures, right? Like you're yes. trading a non-playoff team to a playoff team. You're not having two playoff teams trade top guys. So Calgary needs futures. Calgary got futures. And yeah. if you're Vancouver, you don't want to subtract from your NHL roster. No, no, like it. And and again, the Canucks did not give up like Karamaki. They did not give up Olander. They did not give up Hoaglander or Pod Colson or Aturatu. All the big names that the Canucks have in the system, mm-hmm. they did not give up. Brustevich and Brustevich is a very good prospect, but he was behind all those players because yeah. all those players are either ahead of him in in terms of draft draft capital and the what they use to get them or closer to the nhl in terms of being and, and i think for Bristevich coming to calgary is going to be great because again we don't have a lot there in our ahl system so i think even you know in the in the juniors we don't have a lot there on the blue line i think he will probably get more chances than he would in vancouver a lot of systems and it'll be up to him to decide what he does with those opportunities yeah but I don't think it'll be like Vancouver where he might not get the opportunity because he's fourth or fifth down on that depth chart. Yeah. And he would have ended up, could have ended up similar to Jack Rathbone where he just, there was nowhere for him to go outside of Abbotsford. I think that it was probably inevitable that he got traded. I just think it was what deal. Yeah. And he's been, he's had such a great season that his value is probably as high, is potentially as high as it could be. Yeah, like it could get higher. Um, definitely, if he continues to to uh, to play like he has for a lot of this 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 season, and he can develop a, a, a his defensive game a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but like strike what like strike while the iron's hot. Um, sure. The Canucks needed to make wanted to wanted to make a move to help help this team because they've de- they definitely deserved to have that. You've you've done everything you can it's time for us to do something yeah. to help you um, type move. And that's what this is. Yeah. And I think it signals to fans and players that we're all in. Yeah. I don't know they how don't, many other I, assets they have to make another deal. I have a feeling that this is Vancouver's big deal. Oh, this is their big deal. I, if they're going to do anything, I don't think they're in on, I don't think they'll be in, in on TANF unless something massively changes. Can you imagine as much as we th- would love th- it? Three of Connie's first four deals with Vancouver. <laughs> It'd be ridiculous. He's already done two um, or three I, with Vancouver. Like, let's just give you the whole darn roster. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do. I think the Canucks are probably going to be looking for maybe an, adding some. Uh, I don't. I don't like using the word grit anymore. I don't think that's the right term in today's uh, NHL. But some another four, hard hard four checker up front. Uh, who can rotate through the lines because that's mm-hmm. always been an issue of of, of uh, having consistent forechecking on the top on the top lines because right now I think you're looking at um, Miller and Besser as a pair, uh, the Eliases as a pair, and then you've got Mikheyev, Pia Suter, 
as your other two top six forwards right now. Um, and then you've got Hoaglander, you've got uh, Lafferty, who have, who have both had um, stints up, up top there. Um, They've got a lot of European and European type players, and they need more of a Daryl Sutter type player, that big, gritty Western Canadian boy. Yeah, I think the Jordan Greenway was a player that uh, yeah. um, there was uh, rumors that they were looking at. Yeah, if they need a guy um, from the Flames, they can have Walker Dewar. He could fit that or Klapka. <laughs> but they also have. Like, if we make another trade together, it's going to become like Red Rover. It's just going to be Jim Rutherford. Like, <laughs> Red Rover, Red Rover, we call Tanev over. <laughs> it was complete opposite of what was it, 2021. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think um, Tanev ends up in Vancouver. I think if it was going to happen, it would have happened as part of this deal. I agree. Yeah, I think the Canucks are looking. Yeah, I think the Canucks are looking for yeah another sort of yeah north south four checking forward as well as maybe another depth defenseman. Yeah, I think that's. I think it's going to cost more to them. acquire Tanev by himself than it would have as part of this package. It, it, it sounds like they did definitely wanted to see. Um, they de- the, yeah, the players are definitely asking for another first round pick yeah. for Tanov as part of this deal. I don't think that's what the Canucks are willing to give up at this point. So unless they and so that's why I think this if they acquire another defenseman, there'll be another depth defenseman. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then another sort of yeah, another bottom six. I think it's very thing. likely Tanov could end up there in the offseason, but I think I think he will be leaving the flames, but I don't think he's going to Vancouver. No, I it, the I think the question is is whether or not um the flames and leafs can work out a deal for tanov we know that the leafs gm likes him yeah and we know and and i'm not i'm not sure that the the the, the, there's the appetite to make a deal with with that with 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 brad living right now within the i I think i think you make the deal but i think there's a bit of a premium he's gonna have to pay Brad, we know you like this guy this is your guy you can have him it's like, you know, when you were a sibling, your kid was playing with a toy and you wanted it and, you know, it became a bigger deal because you were playing with it. Like, I think that's kind of the way it is. This is your player, Brad. You can have him back. You're going to have to pay us for him. <laughs> yeah. Sean, here's a question for you. So Elias Lindholm and Jacob Markstrom were best friends here in Calgary. And I mean, Tanev, good friends with Markstrom too. We've even seen, you know, Markstrom's mask has Tanev's missing teeth on it. If... And maybe we don't want to go down this road today, but if Lindholm's gone, if Tanev goes, do you think that's going to make the decision for Markstrom easier to say I want out of town too? I think it, I think that's definitely part of it. Yeah, um, I know that. Uh, I, I believe that uh, Lindholm's wife and Tanev's wife are both uh, are both good friends too. So there's not only just the players, but the the, the families as well that that play into this. Um, I definitely think that is that is the case. Um, that being said, Markstrom is a new is, is also a new father, um, and with a family. Um, and I do think that, and and trading goaltenders in seasons always a little bit dicey for sure. Um, and he's he's got a full no no move clause. So I I do what I don't think that we'll see the Markstrom trade this year, this season. Um, before the deadline, but I do, I won't be surprised if that is a move that is done draft day around the draft or around yeah. free agency. You get, you get three playoff runs out of him if you acquire him before the end of the season, but I think a team will have to pay a premium for that extra playoff round. And it's a matter of who doesn't think their goaltending is solid enough to pay that premium. Yeah. Because so. I think the the price you will pay, you will pay dearly to bring them in at the at the deadline. If you're, you know, if you're LA or someone, you think you need that, and you're willing to pay it, great. But I don't know that anyone's going to pay what I think the Flames are going to want mid season. Yeah, yeah, because I think that's I know a I've, goalie has was... to be moved, in my opinion, in the off season, and I wouldn't be surprised as Markstrom. Yeah, because I think it's it, well, I don't think he's going to want to stick around for a. Uh, a, a youth movement. Reach no, I don't think so. And he's in his mid thirties too. It. Like you said, he's a new dad, mm-hmm. but at some point you're going to want to win that cup so you can get out of here. Exactly. So I think, I think that is an off season move. Um, I think we will see Tanev moved. I think we will see whether or not Hannafin's moved is, is it is going to be a, a question here. My um, strong thought on that is I have a feeling I have, 
a feeling and also a little bit of intel that the Flames said to Hannafin before he left for the break. Let us know when you get back if you're in or out. We need to know after this break if you're in or out. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. I think that's that's kind of the vibe that I was. I, I was get the sense they've sent the him little... away with a contract and said final offer, take it or leave it. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't, yeah, if you if you leave it, then we're trading you, and and yep. it's just it's full blown rebuild. Think about it. Take a week. Talk to your family. Yeah. Think about what you want to do. But we need to know when you get back. Yeah. And the brand brand new uh, brand new year, new flames. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't know, like you know, I. On our show, we've talked a lot this year about are the Flames going to retool or are they going to run for the playoffs? I think this trade shows you the way they're going. Like, I don't think you you trade Lindholm and then go, well, we're still trying to get that playoff spot. I think now we know they're selling. Oh, they're they're definitely selling. It's whether or not are they, uh, how far down down the road are they looking? Are they looking? You, ha- to- you have to move Tanev. Like you've got to yeah. move your UFAs. And Conroy even said that at the beginning of the year. You can't let these UFAs walk after you know still having I think a, a red butt from Goudreau. Um, you know you can't let them walk. Now do I think they're going to strip down everybody? No, but I think they will. You know trade Adam Greer or AJ Greer, trade Tanev, trade the UFAs for something, and then figure it out in the off season. It's not necessarily trade the, the trade the the UFAs all the UFAs. It's figure out who wants to stay and who, and if they aren't willing to stay, you trade them. I think you got to have them signed by the deadline. Like I think oh, whoever is a oh, UFA, no, you have to sign. Yeah, have, definitely, definitely. That's yeah, it. If you're you still a Washington UFA at the trade year. deadline day, we will move you. Like if you don't want to be moved, sign a deal before then. You don't want this sort of like Goudreau. Maybe I'll resign. Maybe I won't. Oh, sorry, last minute I decided I don't want to. Like I think. Ink has to be on paper before the deadline. And like real realistically, that's the the big ones are Hannafin and, and Tanov. After mm-hmm. that, it's I think there's um, value to be had in Greer this year. Greer Greer is someone, yeah, that he he'll he will be someone that uh, teams will want for for a depth. Like you'll yeah. get a, you'll get another mid round pick for him, which is 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 value. Mm-hmm. It adds value, adds adds more ammo to the to everything here. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's you, Oliver Shillington's also a UFA, but that's such if a I'm different a GM, I don't touch situation. him. Like, I don't know what yeah. he is at this point. Yeah, I'm not it's trading such a for different him, situation. Yeah, that, if I uh, want him, I'll talk to him in the off season. But honestly, if the Flames don't re-sign Shillington, I don't think he's in the NHL next year. Or yeah, well, so he'll get like a PTO and see where he goes. He might, yeah. But I just I think there's enough guys like him. And remember, he's really had one good year as a Flame, like. He had yeah. one good year and earned this deal. Before that, he was a six, seven guy. And there's enough guys that you know what they are if you're going to make that investment. I think that, but I, I still think there'll be enough. There'll be a, be enough peop, uh, teams that looking for defensemen and looking for steep pe- defensemen that they could get for cheaper. Right? Yeah, and, and I don't know how much cheaper play up get them, we'll higher up in the yeah. up in the lineup. So, um. Other than that, uh, is there anything we have we've missed here, Dan, in terms of this trade? I don't think so. I was nervous. I mean, I think anytime you're trading your top guy, your top six forward, you're nervous about the return. And I was, I know a lot of people thought this would be all draft pick return. You're not going to trade these guys. Maybe Tana for a couple picks, but I think that you know, if Hannafin moves, it's going to be for real bodies. If uh, you know, we saw Lindholm move. It's going to be for real bodies. Like I like the return for Calgary. I just I worry this could end up as the Jerome McGinley trade, where none of these guys pan out, and five years from now it's a waste. I think it's a gamble worth taking, though. And I think you know, for where Calgary is, it's a neat, necessary gamble, and it'll be interesting to see where they all end up. Yeah, uh, and also in today's day and age, it's never going to be just a drop like player for draft yeah. pick right now uh, the, the, with the cap situation you're always going to have that uh, playing in into it yeah um and that's literally why kuzmenko was was involved in this trade they and kuzmenko a... reminds me a lot of sharon govich and that he's the guy who had a good year didn't really look good with a new coach or new way of doing things goes to a new home maybe looks better i mean sharon govich kind of odd man out in new jersey too and came here so you know, maybe that that becomes part of the Flames' identity a little bit is 
um, you know, starting to be that rehab center, if you will, not like Edmonton, but, um, that's a real rehab center. You got Perry, you got Kane, but you know, a place you can come to get your game going again. Just the, out, you have it, have just, and, and that can be part of the identity, the outcasts or those yeah. similar to like the, the um, golden Knights in the first year, they were exactly. they had the misfit line and all that. You, you could build that into the identity of the flames yeah. going forwards. If you continue to add players like that. And you know, the difference between Kuzmenko and, uh, and, Lindholm salaries less than a million, I think. Like the Flames did not take on a lot of money here. And yeah, six hundred and fifty million, six hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars between the two, um, which is not insignificant for both teams. Um, it's uh, it's it, it's not that not that big of a, a jump for the Flames, and but it also frees up six hundred fifty k for the Canucks to make a move this year. Yeah. And plus the Canucks, they don't they don't have the uh, Kuzmenko's deal, deal on the books for next year as well. Yeah, and the only reason I bring it up is I think the Flames will shed some other money here. I can see them becoming a, a salary broker at the deadline, taking somebody, absorbing half, and moving them on from another team. We see somebody do that every year, and we don't have to go down this road. But I think the Flames are about to get about two point five million in cap relief if uh, Dubé is not available. I yeah, I'm not sure out. what what's going to happen with that, but yeah, yeah. right now that the, the they currently have uh, just under one and a half million in in cap space, and that could grow substantially with more trades that they make. Yeah, I mean, if you move Tanev, there's four and a half right there, depending on what comes back. That's true. Right? Yeah. So because again, it's it's such a tight league. Most of the leagues tight to the cap. You're yeah. going to have to take a contract back in yeah, or, or eat part of it. And that's another thing or, I guess we should it, go yeah. back to on this Lindholm deal. I was really impressed. The flames didn't eat any money. Like I was kind of expecting they would have eaten half of Lindholm to move him to someplace. Cause even though he's got a good deal, everybody's so close to the cap. And so taking back Kuzmenko, I think is a better option than eating money. Cause at least you can turn it into an asset. And I think that's, I think that's one of the reasons why, I, w- I wonder if that might have been one of the reasons why the Canucks were able to to jump up, up uh, jump up the queue there and I make agree. sure that it's uh, and and get Lindholm is because they had Kuzmenko who was may may not be as good of a player as some of the other mm-hmm. players that they were getting but they had better tr- they were giving up better um better prospects in, in Brustevich yeah. and they and they didn't require um, when you eat salary it's salary. dead money when you bring in a guy yeah. at least you can try to get some out of them or move them on yes yeah even yeah. if it is just till the end of the year which which Lindholm this Lindholm deal would be it still hampers what you can do later on that's right well I guess uh we can leave this with the fact that these trade trees continue especially the Lindholm one and I mean, you know, he was brought in and now sent out again, and we'll see where this trade tree ends. Yeah, yeah, it's always it's always fun to follow the branches of the trade tree. And it's kind of funny that Lindholm and Hannafin were brought in at the same time and probably leaving at the same time. I find that kind of interesting. Well, that and also, yeah, the the two was it two years ago you had everyone that that whole the Gato line and all that, and now they're all gone. Yeah, all gone, all to different teams too. Yeah, and I mean, even on that trade tree, I mean, you know, Furlan's not around. Fox got moved on. Like, no team is going to retain those assets for long term. No. But thanks for joining, uh, joining me, Dan. Thanks for having me. Uh, how can we uh, follow you and uh, find all your stuff? Anyone who wants to follow us, find us anywhere that you find podcasts. Uh, we're Fireside Chat. We record every every Sunday night for a Monday show. And do you mind if I plug one other thing, Sean? Go for it. Anyone who's here in town uh, on Thursday, come on down to Bow River Brewing's Tap Room at 5769 4th Street Southeast. It's over by Chinook Center. We're going to be doing Flames trivia that night. Where are you going to go on game night to find a better deal than $6 for a fresh pint of beer and 13 bucks for a pizza? Either come and play by yourself, hog all the glory, or bring your line mates, play as a team either way. Doesn't matter, but we'll be doing trivia during the intermissions. We have a great prize pack for the winner with some Fireside Chat swag. We'll have some free beer from our pals at Bow River, and we'll also have some flame stuff. So if you're in town, 
Come on down if you want those details again. You can either go to firesidechat.ca and you'll see Trivia Night in the navigation at the top, or check out our Facebook, and it's in both places. All right, yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, and then uh, you can follow me at BeardedConnect03 on Twitter. You can follow the podcast at Shifts and Pucks on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it these days. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You can follow Kevin K E V O L E on all the social medias. Chris is Schneids S at S C H N E I D Z at all this on all the social medias. Tyler is T Noble T N O B L E on the X app. Devin is Gordhouse zero nine on the X app. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll uh, definitely enjoy. Yes, at Fireside Podcast for Dan and the the fireside podcast and yeah again thank you for tuning in thank you for giving your uh, for giving me. us your your comments and on all that we look forward to seeing you again next time bye for now